Hello again. Hmm. Today I want to speak of, about the persona. The persona that we build, each of us, for ourselves. I have a persona I have built throughout my life of a um, male human who is versatile, intelligent, spontaneous, silently rebellious. intensely special deep powerful <clears throat> unburdened by the shackles of this material world. <laughs> I have built up this persona in my mind, thinking that this is what I want to be and what I want to present to others. It has served me well. Very well. <sighs> it's taking me through human life. <clears throat> I have developed it, developed it while I've been developing myself. The true aspects of myself. My courage my discernment, my intellect, my trust, and my love, my willpower. I have believed that this persona has kept me safe. In this world when, where one believes one needs to survive. survives by avoiding pains and discomforts. The pains of material lack. Mm. As we aged, by money. The pains of abandonment, loneliness and rejection assuaged by social connections. The pains of confusion and purposelessness assuaged by finding and holding on to particular ideas and concepts that one uses to guide oneself throughout life. And 
so I have built this framework through which I am able to obtain money, material resources, social connections, ideas, concepts, ideologies, purposes, temporary purposes one adopts while one journeys through life, meanders through life. And I feel the impulse to surrender this persona, to dissolve it, to, to, to give it up. It is no, not truly me, it is not truly mine. And any framework and structure that we adopt, no matter how useful, no matter how long it has served us, no matter how beneficent and apparently useful it is, No such framework is eternally useful. Because life grows, life evolves. And as it grows and evolves, it grows into more space. It requires more space, more freedom, more dimensions to move and grow through less limitations and all frameworks no matter how mm, apparently useful and helpful they are All frameworks are limitations. Mm. And so today I feel the impulse to to surrender it. A declaration of sorts. allowed to say I see this framework that I have built around me I see still the, 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 the shackles that still hold on to me and I feel them it's the specific parts of my body for money, the need for friendships, the need for sense, the need for things to make sense. I don't need them anymore. Not all of them. Not most of them. I don't believe this means anything, any particular, any action in particular, anything that I will do or will not do. 
I don't believe it means changing my name or changing the place I live or the people that I interact with. It simply means the bringing down the fences and barriers within me that prevent me from moving in particular directions. Such as outside of the safety limits I have been imposed upon myself to remain a reliable trustworthy member of society self-reliant helpful I don't need it that does not mean that I cannot continue to be that but it means that I can be not that and continue to live and continue to explore because space is larger than the limits that we impose upon ourselves and I wish to explore it further I am anything. Anything. I will. And I ask for all my limitations to be dissolved and shed away from me. so that the inner parts of me may grow, the essence of me may grow, like the pink and purple and yellow flowers that bloom outside in the springtime. There's one main action I intend to take during this video, and that is to state with as much clarity and as much <clears throat> straightforwardness as I'm able to gather right now. my position on what is important in human life with regards to this reality that we live in. I <clears throat> will speak of things of some and many things <clears throat> with conviction and with truth even with personal truth even though I may not have proof of them and that is a compromise that I make with my internal need for correctness Human society is wasting itself.
human society is grasping on to the concept that the material is the important. And that is not true. Human society has been grasping on to the belief that money, that the measured stability of the economy, and that Measurements such as profits and hmm. tax percentages are the are the key factors that can save us. Humans have been chasing after money, after prestige, after uh, material security. There's a, like a need, but not just a need, but like a, a never-ending greed for material security that has infected human society for thousands of years. And while it may have been necessary for us in order to grow, I believe it is no longer. Not this unlimited greed. There is greed because there is fear of not surviving, of losing, of failing in life. And there is fear of failing in life because there is mistrust that the world does not take care of us. And in many ways that's true, the world is not taking care of us. We learn to take care of ourselves. However, we have billions of individuals on this planet, which can and do help each other very often. And we all know, we all feel that in the core of our essence, our nature is to help each other. And we have. We have been doing and that is how society has grown. And the challenge that we face these days is how does this help that arose in small communities, in communities that we can individually observe and encompass mentally, how can, how can that grow to a national and a global scale? We are struggling to understand how to do that. We are doing that. We are doing the work. But many people are missing out on the key factors, some key factors. Because many are still driven by the worshipping of the, of the material as the, as the core. And it is not. The material is not the core. The core is 
us. The essence of us. Deeper than the body that we have. Deeper than the emotions that we feel. Deeper than the ideas that we have and share and move around the world at social media speed. We are love at our core. We share love as our nature, as our impulse. And when this, this does not happen, it is because it is distorted and blocked by the outer layers of fear and of greed and of pride and of hatred that have grown on so many of us individuals and the society as a whole gradually because we don't understand that there is something deeper than the material. To me, this is a highly important topic and one that I have feared talking about because the background of the persona that I have built, that I have been that I was talking about before is traditional. It fits into society. It has the limitation that of, of, um, of conservative thinking, Western education, the worshiping of the mental and of the intellect as the truth and anything that goes outside of the fringes of the, of the accepted academic science as wishy-washy and uh, crazy talk and something not to be trusted, something not to be trusted. So my fear has been if I speak of these topics to others, then I will not be considered trustworthy anymore. And that is why I am dissolving my persona. It is not necessary anymore. It is a limitation now. Because what I see is that we, as humans, we, we need, we need to share love amongst ourselves in order to keep growing. We cannot continue to ignore it and still point at the money and at the things and at technology thinking that that will save us. That cannot save us. That focuses on effects, on, on the effects of the things that we truly are inside, the things that we truly are inside are deeper. Deeper even than ideas and thoughts. I uh, I come from a background that appreciates, understands mathematics, computer science. Um, physics, the pure sciences. It understands, at least from a layman's perspective, most of the traditional ah, academic fields. 
driven by curiosity and by a, a capable intellect. And I say this not to emphasize upon personal traits or, or motivated by vanity, but because I wish to make it as explicit as possible, as I wish to make my statement as trustworthy, as evidenced, as substantiated as possible, that the material is not the important part. The important part is within us. And that we must seek inside if we are to continue growing. We must. The forces of the world, the, the inner worlds that I don't completely understand, but I know, oh, they're there, they're there. They have been pulling and pushing and swaying our world together and closer and closer. All the peoples, all the nations are now like <clears throat> smooshing into each other. Social media has, is pulling us all together and the population is getting larger and <sighs> we're growing. We're just growing. And while at the same time we humans think that we are separate from each other. This, this is the, this is the main problem that I haven't specified so far. That, the separation, the thinking that I am separate from you, the thinking that he is separate from me, and that then, therefore, I will compete with that person because there are limited resources on Earth. And that means that if I have more than he has less and vice versa and there is comparison and who has more and who has less and who knows more and who knows less and who has more friends and who has less friends and oh you got to do that well I haven't done that oh I'm sad and competition competition and comparison these are detrimental they are detrimental to human society and it is not about what we say and about what we act. They, these, what we say and what we act are symptoms of what is happening inside. But what is happening inside, that is what we have the task of understanding and cleaning. We must clean ourselves. In order to keep growing. This separation that we feel with other people, it is internal. It is internal. It is, and by internal it means it, it belongs to us. We often think that, 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 that other people are unfriendly or that other people are, are hard to approach or, or they have rejected you or that the world has rejected you or that the Or that you are not welcome, you are not well understood, and so nobody likes you. And there are many, many excuses that we make for ourselves, reasons for which each of us individuals does not belong in the world, or fears that we don't, or fears or ideas for which other people do not belong in the world. And the truth, the axiomatic truth of the matter is that we all belong. We all belong because we are here. We just are. We do. And it is up to us simply to better understand each other, to know each other, to be willing to see each other deeper. 
and to recognize that all those excuses and fears and admirations that we have projected upon each other, all the reasons for which we are separate, to see that all of those are simply within. They are within. That inside of us is, lives the entire reality that we experience. And the fact that there is an external world and an external reality, the actual material world that we interact with, is something that we have the task to understand. But there are people-to-people -people interaction, person-to-person, one-to-one. The understanding of the other, the digging into the other. We can dig into each other's eyes. And think and truly understand where, uh, where are all those reasons for which I think that you are different from me. What are they saying? Are they saying, I don't trust you? Are they saying, you are not good enough? Or I am not good enough? Good enough for what? What exactly are, is it saying and, and why? It requires introspection. It requires <clears throat> sinking into the feeling. Very often people remain in the thoughts. Just in, not only in thoughts, but even in pre-canned thoughts. Oh, that beggar in the street. Oh yeah, he's not good enough for society. It's done. Why? What, why? Why is he not good enough? Good enough for what exactly? What is the, what is the, uh, the standard against which you are comparing? Do you, do you believe that standard is correct? That it should apply to all of us? Can you understand that a person's life is largely dictated by the by the circumstances and the context in which he was born and grown. Do we understand that each of us is hugely an effect of where we were born? And whether this was random or chosen by the soul, it does not matter that much, but we, can we realize that all these separations are like flavors? Can you realize that inside of each of us, there is simply life. There is life that is looking out, seeing what is, attempting to understand what's going on, make sense of things, like coalesce different signals into one coherent whole, which is the, the task of the mind, I believe. And because we receive different signals, we develop different minds with different ideas, with different frameworks, with different techniques for survival. But 
the life that is behind of that is it not the same is it not the same life that is attempting to to, to be and why for figuring it out Can we understand? Can we see? Can we feel that? Ah! Oh. That the separations we believe between us are personas, they are screens. They are clothes. Clothes, some that we have chosen and some that we have not chosen. And at the core of everything, of everything, there is this central witness, chooser, that we are. We are expressing some kind of purpose, some kind of intelligence. We all are, each of us, different parts of life, all the trees, they are expressing their own truths. We are expressing our own truths. We humans, we make buildings and technology and connections and, uh, and we, are, we are materializing ideas down into the physical world. The ideas of connection whoa, down into the physical world. And we have been doing that amazingly in the last few decades. And we continue to do so. But we will only keep getting more pushed together and to avoid disaster, physical disaster, I think we need to understand that we different human beings, that the individual human beings are not essentially different from one another. We are the same. We are life. We are life capable of intellect, capable of emotions, capable of physical prowess and as we know individual prowess is limited and the prowess of a group of a whole group when intentions and when intentions um, align and when trust develops between the group it grows massively and we are learning we are learning, we're struggling to understand how to do that. But what I posit here is that the key to being able to join in such groups to develop correctly, both individually, individually to remove these distortions, and as a group to also remove the group distortion, but also to connect with one another with love. The same love that has been spoken of for thousands of years. If we are able to do it with love, if we are able to embody love, to let the love that we are shine through all of this, these layers of distortions that we have built, and that's why we need to clean them out, then we can understand, ah, person, other person, you're just the same like me. You're trying to do the same things, the same things as me. You're trying to survive. You're trying to have a good life, to, to deal with your own fears and to deal with your own pains and your own greed and your own anger and your own resentments. I see you. I see you life in behind all of that. And when you realize that, when you realize that, 
sameness and that oh my god oh my god he doesn't know all the distortion that he has around him the natural impulse that comes along is oh my god let me help you <laughs> let me help you and yet there's understanding that <laughs> one cannot help the other without the other's free will it, 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 we cannot. Free will is inherent to our nature. And only each of us can clean. Only each of us can clean the distortions and impurities that we have accumulated, the illusions that we think we are. I think that with this statement I'm trying to help. I want to help. I want people to know. That the material world is, in a, in a matter of speaking, it is one of the, the, the least of the values. that the true values lie within. In the emotional there's value, in the intellectual there's value, and then deeper in the love, in the life that we are, there is value. And when we realize, when we realize higher and higher the values that exist, we can evolve, we can grow further, we can. there is joy in this understanding and I speak it as a programmer who has been curious about the world for 39 years who is afraid of saying what he thinks he is because he's afraid that he is invoking his own vanity and he knows that But he does not want vanity to, to, to dominate him. For a person who has dealt with the dilemma of seeking social recognition as a value in their lives. I want to make it clear, as clear as I can, that I am integrating as much as I can, all of the life that I have had, the traditional life of, uh, I would call myself a technologist, a computer scientist, a person who uses the intellect, who understands the world as, you know, who understands the world, who has grown up in a, in a, in a, in an educated environment, in academia, in corporate world, Mostly in, in the Western world, mostly, but I've lived in different countries. I speak almost three languages. I can appreciate some art. I appreciate the difficulties of economics and of uh, social problems. I understand the sciences. I understand the I understand why science has been so prickly about allowing the topics of spiritualism and religion to influence them. But the fact of the matter is, so many people who, are, who tend towards intellectualism and who, rightly so, develop their intellect to understand, they reject their the, the, the value of the, the, the rest, of the rest of what they are made of. Partly their emotions, they reject the emotions, they believe, oh, if, the, if emotions influence my decisions, then I'm no longer pure. And being no longer pure is a problem because then one no longer trusts oneself, or maybe other people might not trust myself, and oh no, that might 
that might break my own reputation, my own position in society. And so, no, 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 no. I'll remain intellectual, intellectual, intellectual. And emotions go away, and emotions go away. And these things that people say about, oh, they're the wishy washy things of love, and oh, yeah, that's all be peaceful and stuff. Blah, 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 blah. We remove them, we remove them from my life because they are, they are dangerous, because they are dangerous to one's security in life. It need not be so. We need not reject the parts of ourselves. And the camera is shifting because I'm bumping up. <clears throat> That's the problem, that we are rejecting parts of ourselves. We're rejecting the, from the intellectual side of things. We're rejecting the emotional parts of ourselves. We're rejecting the material side of ourselves, sometimes. Refusing to give it importance because we're afraid that it can pollute it. And, but there, <laughs> and yes, there, there, it is, I do understand that there's, there are, there's a potential for pollution when we don't understand, when we don't control our emotions correctly. But we can, we can, if we dig and we understand and we feel what it is we actually have inside, we can come to understand everything that we have inside. It. And it is a world. of mm, additional dimensions of existence, of being, of feeling, our ideas are interwoven with our emotions and our feelings and the state of our body and our memories. If we focus only on the, on the intellect, we are it is as if we are projecting a five-dimensional reality into two dimensions, or into one dimension, and feeling, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I understand it, I understand it. it it's, not, it's not full picture. We must dig in deeper to truly understand the reality. The reality is everything. And the problems that we have both at an individual and at a societal level can mostly be traced to our neglect of some of the parts of ourselves, of the emotional parts of ourselves, of the, of the, the love parts of ourselves. In computers and science and in mathematics there is a desiring impulse towards abstraction. If we understand the abstract, if we understand the general rule, then everything is under, well understood and that is enough. And that has some truth to it. But the fact of the matter is we cannot truly abstract everything fully because the dense exists. The dense exists. And if we don't take the time to truly dig into it, dig and feel and cry out everything that is still remains to be cried or laugh out everything that still remains to be laughed or shout and yell out everything that still remains to be shouted and yelled. Then we are not yet whole. We are not yet whole. And the essence in us desires to be whole. So this is my statement, I believe. Let us seek within for the true value, for the true reality of things, for the causes of things. Let us not assume why things are the way they are, simply because we have held such a causal effect from 
a long time ago that we have concluded or that someone told us about it. Oh, and we just assume, no, that's the right thing because that's what we see happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Let us dig. Let us feel. Let us understand individually with or by ourselves. What is it that this reality really is? Why our reactions to other people are the way they are? <clears throat> and let's and let's use the influence of other people. There are many people that are amazing at saying truths that I feel like, ah, oh, well, that's they they say they have many theoretical frameworks and uh, they are very useful. And if I may suggest some, I would seek out the writings of uh, Khalil Gibran, the prophet. Uh, look at the writings of Ralph Waldo Emerson. I've only read Nature, but I've heard that the others are also very good. Uh, listen to what Alan Watts has to say on the subject. <laughs> he has a lot to say on the subject. Read the books of Alice Bailey. <clears throat> Dozens, literally dozens of them. Mm. But furthermore, think, think and feel and investigate, analyze why. Let not your daily discomforts go by neglected and ignored. Feel, feel, dig, explore. Explore. There's one word I have in use in that <clears throat> that I feel I wish to define in order to avoid ambiguity. Love. Love. <laughs> People say, oh, love and peace. Oh, we should just love each other. Love is the answer. Love, love, love. Okay, what is love? Huh? I had that question for a long time. And so I wish to share the, my, my own personal answer <laughs> at this moment. And I feel it as love is the seeing of another. And the recognition in that other of oneself. And in that recognition, all the other qualities and characteristics that are attributed to love flow naturally the care, the, the attachment, the harmony, they all arise naturally because we realize that the other is us. It's the same as us. And I want to express right now, actually, that I feel fear of sharing this video because I feel shame. I feel still some shame of <laughs> of the the the, the um, uncommonality, the extraordinariness of these words that I am saying. The clash, the fear of mixing the context of I was a computer scientist in Google 
example, and I know mathematics with saying love is <laughs> important. But the fact of the matter is, I have seen into your eyes, perhaps not yours particularly, I mean you as people in the world. And I have come to understand, to really see, yes, that is me, that is me. And I want you to know that, too. I want you to see others and to realize that they are you. <laughs> I want you to see me and to realize that I am you. In La Ketch. what people say that the Mayans, that the Mayans said. In La Ketch. So I feel shame of mixing these things. Because it destroys my persona. It destroys it. I have been rejecting the affirmation of spirituality, the affirmation of the, of the importance of anything that's not intellectual or anything that's not tangible for a long time. But all these things, they can be made tangible. They are tangible at a subtle, at a subtle level. If we dig, if we dig deep, if we understand by observation, by analysis, by analogy with other experiences, by seeking, just seek. There are so many ways of seeking. And our own soul guides us to the seeking. If you desire to seek, just dig, dig within, feel, explore. So yes, this video, for me, it destroys my persona. Because it, it, it opens up these territories of what I used to think to myself were wishy-washy and unproven and probably would make me be become trustworthy in the eyes of my peers. That is why I surrendered my persona at the beginning of this video. Via this action, I dissolve it a little more. If not completely. Ah, this is me. It is also a statement of who I am. And it is a statement of of a hope and a desire for you also to see and feel the truth. The truth of love.
The music and the lyrics are piano yeah, are amazing. They are a great place to seek. I appreciate the time you have <clears throat> taken to listen to me. Please live for it.